Hey, hello. If you're new here, my name is Rain. If you're not new here, welcome back. I really appreciate you stopping on by. In today's video, I'm just doing anatomy. <laughs> I mentioned in my last video that I just have been in a bit of an art slump and not really being able to creatively express myself how I want to. The art just isn't arting. And I also mentioned in my last video that I had intended for my first video of the year to be me just doing anatomy studies and that I instead wanted to extend that to two weeks of me just sketching anatomy thingies here and there. So if you want to do body studies with me, I mean, you're welcome to join in or just draw along if you do. Tell me what you draw in the comments, tell me about it, tag me if you want to. I'm always excited to know what you guys are getting up to and the type of just things you do whilst watching my videos. So I also wanted to say thank you for 600 subscribers. I think I'm at like 620 now. I was teetering between like 598 and 600. Um, when my last video went up. So I do want to say thank you. I'll talk about it a bit more later. But um, as for this video, it is like 51 minutes of anatomy studies. I am going to try and cut it down. It might end up longer. I haven't filmed the outro <laughs> clip yet. But one of the things that I struggle with the most in anatomy is actually legs. <laughs> I have a my art style I kind of tend to find that I very much uh, get drawn to a kind of simplistic leg structure and I kind of elongate them a bit too much and with that I find that I don't really actually take into account or put much care into the curves of the leg the way that the kind of front calf bone can curve like there's a lot of bones down there totally um but that um that big calf bone um can kind of curve forward kind of the curve of the muscle at the back of the calf from time to time i'm not muscly so i don't have that the way muscles can kind of flex the way everything kind of squishes together when you bend your leg and things of that sort i'm good at feet not doing anatomy studies but like when i'm actually like trying to draw a foot I'm pretty good at drawing feet. That's not a concern. I also am pretty, I struggle with the proportions of the calf to the thigh. I find that my legs are personally a little bit long compared to how they kind of tell you to approach anatomy in terms of like the distribution rule, rule the kind of like five head, six head thing. Um, my legs are a little long for my body in reference to that. I'm very short, so <laughs> very long for me is like not much, but I just tend to find that I have a hard time getting the distribution correct because I am so perceptually altered from doing studies based on my own height. I take a lot of my own reference photos for poses and stuff because I'm really bad at describing what I want on social <laughs> um, social platforms, so if I'm trying to find something on Instagram or um, Pinterest, like a reference, or even Google, I just I have a horrible time describing what I'm looking for, right? So I, I take a lot of my own reference photos when I have a complex pose or a pose where I just really want a particular kind of attitude to be portrayed. Not that it happens particularly often, but I've found that I generally have kind of an alter per altered perception of the length of legs in proportion to the rest of the body. And then I try to subvert that by just shortening it. And I tend to make calves dif disproportionately short. Like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I'm like, oh, the legs are long. I have to shorten the calves and only the calves and then everything is screwed from there. It's, it's a plague on my, on my entity. I'm horrible at leg proportions. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to start with when I was really in the anatomy mood. 
on the um, left sheet, the, the pink pen, I was in bed and I really just wasn't thinking. I just kind of was trying to break down some structures, trying to feel it out, trying to remember how I prefer to stylize the body, how I prefer to break down the body. I generally kind of like to approach um, legs and hip regions with nice big divots, big hip dips, and kind of a widening of the hips and a thickening of the top bit of the thighs. And I kind of sometimes just find myself not quite remembering how I like to stylize the body. And I additionally kind of find that I see myself in situations where I'm not entirely sure how to approach different kind of distributions and shapes. I find that I have a really hard time getting and approaching bodies that are not easily adaptable into that kind of hip dip, thicker thighed perception that I tend to like to do and I stylistically very much enjoy. So I do practice um, bigger bodies in this video, not, um, not as big as I would have liked to go. I found myself not having as much time as I wanted to this week because one of my college courses started. So I didn't quite do as many practices as I had hoped. I think I only did two, two, four, five, five pages? I think I only did five pages. I'll count them at the end when I do my outro. <laughs> But um, I think I only did five pages of studies overall, so I ultimately didn't quite get as far as I wanted to. I do want to, one of these days, make a video where I dedicate a page in my sketchbook to each part of the body and just kind of approaching that and how I like to pursue, um, generally, like, different proportions, different limbs, different things, and really just break down the human body that way. I haven't done that in, I think, a couple of years. I don't think I've actually sat down and gone, like, body part by body part and practiced in a couple of years, and I do think that's something I need to do in 2024 and really kind of reapproach it. But sitting down with Taco's anatomy book, I think this is two of the two set it might be one i have the um i mute i mostly use the one that comes as two books <laughs> so it's one of those two and i just i find that just sitting down with a pen and trying to follow those shapes is really really beneficial for me in trying to remember how the body exists and Practicing how different people break down the body is what helps me probably figure out how I break down the body the most. You know, when I am trying to learn something new artistically, a new skill, or I'm trying to practice something that I'm not super confident in or I'm returning to the basics, one of my first steps is always to find an artist who does their tutorials very, very well, whose style isn't so different from mine that I can't I can't get anything from it so like I really like games like Fran Bow and Little Misfortune and Ebe games like that the art style and how those characters one their child characters I think I think they're all between the ages of 8 and 13 um I don't draw child characters but proportionately the art style is just so different i would not particularly benefit from trying to do a style study for their anatomy right um just a lot of more cartoony styles you know they don't quite follow anatomy the way i like my style to look and how i like to approach the human form so i don't study stuff like that um, I might do a style study sometime just for fun, but it's not what I'd go to when I'm trying to learn to break down the shapes, right? So Taco does approach a generally realistic anime-ish style um, approach to human anatomy, and with that I find that 
how the actual shapes are broken down, the approach to conceptualizing it is very much a nice stepping stone for me when I return to anatomy to go, hey, this is how someone else does it. Try it out, feel it out, and then remember what works for you. I find that in doing it like this, I can think, okay, this doesn't really work for me, but this really does. And um, having that kind of return to different artist approaches to breaking down anatomy, I find is really helpful for me. I don't necessarily recommend it for everybody. I am not a professional. <laughs> I, I know, I, I'm going to go into um, teaching college art and I'm over here like, I don't know how to tell you to do anatomy. I have taken several anatomy courses, um, several, I've taken two anatomy courses, and in that I have kind of not really figured out how people teach anatomy because I've been taught anatomy by um, effectively being told to just do gestures. That's how I was taught human anatomy, was doing gestures, which I don't personally recommend being the only thing you do. I took life one, I took life two, and I found that that class really didn't do anything for teaching me how to break down the human form, and I don't really, I just really didn't benefit from that quite the way I think I was supposed to. I need a more instructional guide to learning a new skill and learning a new concept than just go do it right? I have the same kind of issue with the um, just go draw kind of um, philosophy. I mean, yes, just go draw, but, <laughs> right, but be deliberate about what you draw and what you practice and how you approach drawing it. If you're trying to teach yourself to be an artist. Just drawing isn't going to be the same necessarily as going out of your way to try and find instructional material that you can copy, that you can learn from, to incorporate it into your quote-unquote just drawing, right? So when I was still self-taught, um, not that college art actually taught me much of how to draw. I'm going to be real here. Don't think that college art actually does much for, you know, teaching you how to draw. I know that sounds really weird, but very, very few of my art classes actually went through the process of going, this is how you draw this thing, right? Very few of them were like, okay, go do these studies, do these practices, and you will get better. None of them were practice, um, what's it called? Practice perspective. Go out there and do these little studies, do these practice perspective assignments, try breaking down perspective in these tiny formats. None of that. It was go to a hallway and good luck kid and with that I generally find that I just don't benefit from that type of approach I don't benefit from you learn perspective by going to a room and trying to tackle a 20 by 24 perspective drawing I need smaller studies more conceptual approaches I really need to be I need to be spoon fed the basic material I'm not that intuitive when it comes to art and breaking down structures and conceptualizing the space around me. I can try, but I generally find that it's not good. <laughs> it doesn't really turn out even relatively good. I know, by the way, when I'm pulling up my hands and referencing them, that I'm not always using the right hand. I am able to figure it out though. I just feel the need to <laughs> say that because I do <clears throat> I do reference my own hand a lot when I'm drawing hands. I Most of my art is me taking pictures of my own hand. Not most of my art. Most of the time I draw hands, that is my own hand you're looking at. 
that was the reference. I probably didn't look at someone else's hand. I just copied it and took a picture um, and followed that, right? So, <laughs> um, kind of a kind of a bad habit of mine because you know I'm right-handed, so I'm almost always swapping hands, like like inversing the image, right? But inversing, mirroring, no, eh, it, it, you get the point, right? So, <laughs> I I require very very uh, dumbed down information. I I'm very much reliant on that spoon feeding process. And so when it comes to anatomy, I very much like books like Tacos, where it breaks down those structures into simplified forms without a lot of detail. And it goes through the process of the construction, right? That's really beneficial for me personally when it comes to anatomy and practicing it and figuring it out. And it's from there that that stylization that I'm fond of and um, okay at. I think if I, I think my art style is stylized enough that I'm not hitting accuracy. <laughs> but um, and I think that that's concise. But I don't know. Um, but th from there I stylize things and I tend to elongate fingers and enlarge hands proportionately and. Elongate legs. I think I elongate arms pretty bad too. I, I like a long arm, you know? Um, I like a long arm and I like big hands and long fingers. I like to draw that. It's very, very fun for me. It's something that I personally enjoy um, and I feel is very fun. Things of that nature. So I, I do do that, right? Um, and so there's that. I know a lot of my life drawing professors have recommended a lot of those like constructive anatomy for artist books where it just kind of shows you the bone overlays and the muscle overlays and kind of those good firm anatomical drawings and those just aren't uh, baby enough for me <laughs> um and so there's that another step in my kind of process is to take what I have drawn from a reference and then immediately approach stylizing it, drawing it without a reference aside from my art reference and trying to see if there's enough muscle memory there that I don't need to pull it up again, right? So I find that that also has been very beneficial to me over the years. And it's there and it's with that kind of approach that try and do it once, kind of reference my own art, approach the muscle memory idea of it, kind of try and playing with it that way. It's within that that I have found the ability for gesture drawings to be good for me, right? And I do like gestures. I do. Um, I don't do them as much as I used to. Uh, if you look at Sketchbook 8, which I don't have posted anywhere, so I say that like you can look at it. You can't, um, but I will post a video of it one of these days. Um, but looking at my Sketchbook 8, there are just pages of gesture drawings, goofy little gesture drawings, um, particularly gesture drawings of like clothing. I think my favorite thing to do on Line of Action is to um, <laughs> go to the clothing tab and just skip until I find the goofiest outfits to um, gesture out. I really do love doing that. It's, it's very fun. And so it's within that that a lot of my sketchbook eight is stuff like that and content like that and practice like that. And that is very beneficial for me and it helps me to break down the basic shapes quickly. And it's then that I'm applying the muscle memory of what I've already gone through the process of trying to deepen my understanding of. So it's kind of that, that um, that's how I kind of approach anatomy. Trying to learn anatomy over again. And so it's, it's nice. And I think one of my biggest gripes with the websites that I've used over the years in terms of anatomy does not have as much diversity in bodies 
and general proportions as I think I should have had by now to learn effectively how to draw different bodies and things of that nature. You know, I'm, I'm generally pretty reliant on websites like Line of Action for my gesture drawings and books to kind of figure out bodies. And because I have a bit more of a realistic approach to, I know my art is nowhere near realism whatsoever. That's not what I'm trying to articulate. But it's because I have a slightly more realistic approach to like the proportions and the general like way it would look to reality. I don't, I don't, I don't kind of manipulate the body in a way that would be indicative of a cartoon or a super stylized anime, you know? And so I find that like I don't have a lot of good reference for bigger bodies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty reliant on my own body for a lot of my reference making and there was no encouragement or requirement to kind of approach that in my life drawing classes and the biggest of the bodies were still very much, um, kind of middle-sized women, right? And like your average middle-sized. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think the biggest... I've ever had to go up to in terms of like a pant size for a female model would be a size 14. I don't know men's sizing, but I've only ever referenced more muscular men. Um, definitely never been asked to or required to or offered thicker men outside of just maybe the occasional gesture on line of action, which we weren't allowed to use as models for our bigger pieces in life drawing. And so it's in that that I did want to spend what will be the next chunk of this video approaching just rounder body shapes and shapes that don't kind of lend themselves to the way that I've been stylizing my art so far. I'll get to that momentarily since, you know, this is voiceover rain and I probably really should get better at talking about stuff whilst you're looking at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm pretty, I'm pretty horrible, aren't I? <laughs> okay, well, I paused the recording for just a moment and my brother's cat Iris is here, so we're gonna be, we're gonna have a party now because I'm gonna be juggling a cat trying to eat my mic. <laughs> but I have been really just kind of, I don't know, I've just been really, really eager, artistically speaking, to kind of go back to kind of exploring new things and but also back to exploring new things yes that is what I meant to say you know I used to have a habit of putting like 20 minutes a day to kind of just trying to draw something that I don't know how to draw so you know maybe one day I would spend 20 minutes just trying to draw frogs or just doing like basic perspective studies or trying to draw chairs and I'd just dedicate a page of my sketchbook to that mission to that that goal of just doing something a bit new, a bit different for me, right? And I've been feeling really interested in going back to that. I don't, I don't think it would be content uh, that you guys would be interested in seeing me just sitting down trying to draw a chair and crying about trying to draw a chair, but um, it is stuff that I think I will try and get in the habit of going back to and doing again. And in that, I fathom that my sketchbook tour will be very bizarre. <laughs> very bizarre. Because the things that I haven't approached drawing before or are very out of practice with are all boring furniture things. Like, I just, you know, I've never had to draw a lamp before. So, you know, <laughs> it's just things like that where, you know, I do like drawing backgrounds from time to time and I do want to create more immersive spaces where my OCs can be engaged with right and it's in that that I have to learn to draw furniture um I really do and I usually just wing it right or I just save it until the day it needs to happen and um I fathom those days will be coming more frequently now 
I've been really exploring and playing with mentally speaking, not as much artistically, the dynamics of my OCs and their engagements and the kind of bonds that they have. I've been very much enjoying that as well. I have notes now in my sketchbook of some of these engagements that I would like to have artistic creations for and dynamics I'd like to portray. This might be the year of the OCs, I'm really not sure. It, it would be really cool if Iris didn't try to eat my mic cord, but um, it might be the year of the OCs. I might work on trying to put more effort into kind of, uh, what, how would I put this? Like drawing characters interacting with each other, yeah. I don't feel like I very frequently draw people interacting or like two people in the same space. It's just something that kind of like evades my mind. With my disability work, it's not about more than one person, you know, it's about me and my experiences or creating a character that can articulate those experiences, right? And then a lot of my illustrations last year, I think, were only one character. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I really made any drawings of people interacting with each other aside from Dance with the Dead. Um, and the person was only their upper torso coming out of a mirror and they were a ghost. So, um, <laughs> I don't really know how much that counts, but I do want to have my OCs interact with each other and to kind of solidify that dynamic and talk about them more. Cause I don't have anyone to talk about my OCs with, like, who cares? <laughs> I mean that like in my personal life, like who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I, I do want to articulate those engagements and kind of pursue that form of creative expression. I found that on Instagram, my OCs are not as interesting as the fan art I've created over there. I think a lot of the people who like my content originally probably came from fan art here and there. And then I just find that my OCs don't get a lot of curiosity for them. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't think it does, but like people don't seem to like ask about them or want to know more or want to see them. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe my OCs are just not particularly interesting at all. I really can't tell because like I think about them a lot. You know what I mean? Like I think they're interesting. Maybe they're boring. <laughs> can't tell. I know Vivian as a character is like the boring one. Very, very much an interesting life, an interesting backstory, and an interesting way that he engages with everybody else. But as a character, he's meant to be the boring dad friend. You know what I mean? So maybe it's because Vivian's the one I draw the most that this is, that this boring dad friend energy is not well appreciated. Oh, sorry, Iris. I was playing with her extra toes. Um, <laughs> and so it's within that that I kind of have found that I want to do it, but I also, like, don't want to be boring. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I would like to uh, display my OCs and show my OCs and talk about my OCs, but I also want people to, like, not be bored. <laughs> I want to have people enjoy the, the content I create, so we'll see if that actually happens this year. We'll also see if I can stick on a character design. I think I've changed Vivian's hair like three or four times within the last year. I just cannot commit to his hairstyle ever. Ever. You know what I mean? I just, I'm horrible about it. I don't change my hair. I cut my hair like every three or four months, so it's never the same for very long. You know, it grows out, I cut it, um, and I think within that I have like non-commitment issues for most of my OCs. Your hair just is what it is that day, because um, having hair is short, but as wavy as mine is, like texture-wise, it just is very non-committal hair. It will not stay the same. And I think I kind of carry that to my OCs, and so I make them almost not identifiable. 
to when I originally showed them. <laughs> I think I think that makes sense. But that's just an issue I have and I will overcome it hopefully soon. When it comes to my OCs, I also feel like their actual story and their plot line isn't as existent. Like I don't have a goal for my OCs in their narrative necessarily. It's very much they exist and they live and they do the things that are indicative of existing and living, right? It's the dynamic between them and the mischief they get up to and the more isolated plot points that I enjoy having with them. You know, uh, Vivian is immortal because of the mistakes he's made and the things that he did in the name of science and in the name of love at a point in the past. And I don't have a goal as much for him as achieving a cure to that immortality. I mean, to an extent, I, I think that's something he wants to do and thus a thing that he would like to accomplish one day, but it's not an urgent task, you know? I don't portray that as something that he particularly is fighting for regularly, and it's not this primary objective that I'm trying to execute for him as a character. I think that ultimately when it comes to his point in immortality and more of a character development point would be that I would like for Vivian to achieve a, a satisfaction or an acceptance with his point in life and being immortal but now having immortal friends that are capable of at least making that immortality less bad. And I do want him to have that development where he finds um, love and a romance and can move past the kind of issues he's been facing for so long with failing to cure his wife and then ultimately finding a way to extend her life and now he's alone without her, right? Those sorts of things. I do want to challenge that and I do want to have him go through character development and plot line and I'd like to find a point in his life where he has peace and do that through a narrative. But I don't have a goal or a mission or anything particularly fascinating, you know? There's no gods to conquer, there's no kingdom to destroy, nothing to accomplish, and I've had a very hard time trying to achieve a point where I think that that will be interesting for other people. You know, I don't have a goal. I just want to explore dynamics, you know, and with Eris, I do want to play more with the idea of being a god incarnate, being a god, more of a god reincarnation, or kind of blessed with, cursed by a god's kind of nature and former existence and play with how that causes issues and play with that for her. I don't have a goal for her to achieve, you know, I don't, I don't want her to cure herself of this curse necessarily. I don't think it's something that she needs to do as a character or that they particularly as a group need to accomplish. I just don't, I don't think that is necessary. And I don't really want to put a hardship on her to where it's something that causes torment because it takes a lot of the fun out of the reason I made her the incarnate reincarnation thing of the god Eris, of the god of chaos, you know? I just wanted it to be her nature and almost an unavoidable fact of existence, something that she can't even fix herself, that she is a constant bringer of chaos and mischief and constantly causing problems and things going awry, you know what I mean? And so it's within that that I feel like I don't really have a resolution to create. Can you not eat my blanket? Iris, please stop. Wait, here, do you want this? 
There we go. Sorry, Iris is absolutely trying to eat my blanket like cotton candy or something. I don't even know. Not biscuits. She's eating the biscuits. Can you, can cats make biscuits with their face? She has paws, like she has front paws, but she's just burrowing her face and trying to devour it. This is too deep of a conversation for me to have about a cat that's just absolutely as far from a cat as a cat can be. <laughs> but yeah, did I call you Eris instead of Iris? Ooh, I don't know. I'm not going to go back through the recording and nitpick myself over that. I'd lose my mind. <laughs> but yes, it's within that. And then my kind of more self insert OC, I really do need to think of a proper name for her and finish and flesh out her character design. Um, she's not trying to cure her disability. I don't think that, and I don't enjoy narratives where people are trying to cure their disability unless it's like terminal or like actually curable, you know what I mean? But like, I don't, I didn't give her a condition that is necessarily curable in the name of our like modern medicine and modern kind of approach to, to health and things like that, right? And I don't really want to send her on a journey to try and cure something that can't necessarily be cured normally. I don't, I don't believe in those narratives really. I don't like making chronic conditions like the one I have in real life something that needs to be conquered I think conquered is the right word needs to be eradicated and needs to become a problem because of right I don't like those narratives and so I don't want to make one right and so with that she's existing as an immortal chronically ill demon spawn, right? You know? <laughs> I don't have anything to her except for the dynamics that exist and the way that kind of being a disabled scientist is difficult, right? Because that's what I wanted to be um, before my condition got worse and I switched to hopefully being a virtual art professor. I do hope that that's what comes of my master's degree because it's the only reason to get a master's degree in art. Like, I cannot think of a reason to get a master's degree in art other than to teach people. Like, literally what? <laughs> right? So, um, it's, it's in that that I hope that I can just uh, bring myself comfort with her as a character, you know, making my own comfort character, disabled scientist character, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's what she exists for and that's why I created her. And I just would like to continue to do that and continue to maintain that kind of idea, ideology, idea, that, that, that like, that notion, right? And so I don't know that I can necessarily make my OCs interesting for other people. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, they, they exist for the dynamic, not for a narrative. And I don't think I watch a lot of shows that are for a dynamic opposed to a narrative. I hate slice of life. I really do hate slice of life shows. It's very much not something I enjoy. If you like it, good for you. I don't know how you do it though, right? But um, I hate watching Slice of Life, and so I don't think that I I need to think of something. You know what I mean? But I want to start creating things before I think of something and I make a solid idea. You know, I'm not pursuing a web comic <laughs> or anything like that. Um, I think I would die if I had to make a webcomic, and I take way, way, way too long to draw. I take a really long time to draw. So, I don't think I could, uh, I don't think I could do it, right? But I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think. I do have content about my OCs on my channel. A few videos where I, I draw them, digital art of them, things like that, and then also, um... I think I have some 
some jokey shorts about me and my traumatized OC Thanatos. Maybe Vivian. Vivian Thanatos are... what? Thanatos? I'm fine, I swear. Vivian and Thanatos are... are in hell. They're, they're, they're very, 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 uh, broody, moody, and grumpy old men. Not old men, but old men. You know what I mean? Like, is 5,000 years old and absolutely tired of everybody's shit <laughs> kind of old men. Kind of that, uh, that approach, that, that kind of attitude, which is something I very, very, very much love in, in dynamics. I very much love the, like, broody old mature friend that's the same age as every, not the same age as everyone else, but, like, just the dad, the dad friend that just wants everybody to not die while he reads his morning newspaper. Like, that energy, beautiful, especially with two chaotic troublemaker children friends like Eris and that OC I really do need to think of a name for that I've had for four years and never named, right? <laughs> I'm horrible to her. I'm horrible to her. I just, I'm very picky about names, and I'm very anxious about choosing a name I don't like, and then changing it, and people being confused, and, um, it just hasn't come to me for her like it has for other characters. Like, truly, truly, Eris just happened, you know? Eris being named Eris as an incarnate of chaos was just convenient. Vivian just happened, you know? Vivian was Vivian before I even know who Vivian was, right? Um, the same way I tend to look at an animal and I'm like, yep, that's your name now. I looked at Fizzgig, named her Fizzgig, never thought about her name again. It, there was no critical thought behind it, right? And so it's that kind of uh, attitude and mindset that I haven't had with the OC, and it's made me very anxious about actually committing to a name. So, yeah... Yeah, I really need to do it. I take suggestions. If you want to, like, suggest names for me, go for it. And, you know, that entire part of the video earlier where I was talking about drawing, like, slightly bigger bodies than what I've had to before, um, and how I'd get to it later, I'm now past that point in the video for the most part. And I didn't talk about it. <laughs> Ooh, I really need to start writing scripts. Let me know if you guys want me to actually write scripts or if you like me um, being scattered everywhere. I'm literally everywhere, right? But I, on the right page, I did try to draw some bigger bodies um, from what I usually draw. I do want to kind of go out of my way to find references for bigger bodies, like bigger than what I drew, and kind of practicing that as well. I was having a hard time finding artist breakdowns of bigger bodies where I felt like they were in my style enough to approach it, if that makes sense. I found a lot of like cartoon character designs and stuff like that where it's very much like draw a circle or an oval or like a pear and then like use that to define the body. I don't know if like what I'm saying makes sense but if you look at a lot of like really famous cartoon character designs and things that are a bit more like the I think older Disney might be a better word you can really break those characters down into like three simple shapes and their like body is a shape like it's supposed to be almost entirely one shape and then they're defined within it like you look at them and they are just this thing I don't know if that makes sense I'll I'll try to find a I know I have a book on character design that has exactly what I'm talking about I will try to find a picture or find it put a picture of it on the screen and you know like source the book and everything because I I know what I'm talking about I swear but yeah and then it was around this point in all of my sketching that I realized I don't think I've drawn 
any more masculine bodies. I don't think I worded that. I didn't have the comma in the right place. Any bodies that were more of the like masculine physique. And I find that when it comes to masculine bodies, oh, hello, Hyde. You come to join me in Iris. Um, I find with more masculine bodies, I tend to just make them uh, female bodies without boobs. Like, that's it. That's how I draw masculine bodies. You get thick, thick hips, and you get big thighs and no boobies. That's the kind of all I do. I'm horrible about it. So, I did try to approach drawing some more, like, muscular thighs and trying to get a little bit better about having a more kind of blocky body because that's how they kind of try to tell you to approach a masculine body. Women are squishy and round and uh, feminine shapes are squishy and curvy and masculine bodies and male physiques. You, you get what I mean. Like we're not getting nuanced right here, but like Feminine versus masculine is squishy, curvy versus blocky, hard muscle, right? That kind of thing. And so it's that where I did try to draw some, some blockier bodies. I don't think I really did a good job though. I really do think that I drew a few torsos and then decided that I like drawing my, my squishy men and I don't care because <laughs> I'm horrible, right? I just, I just, I don't really see a reason why we need to, to limit, to limit body shapes to the kind of, the idea of like feminine versus masculine that way. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't see a reason why I can't give men thick thighs and I refuse to approach learning that way. <laughs> The one thing where I'm like, I'm firm on this idea, leave me alone, is just, I don't want to draw muscly thighs. In, unless I'm going out of my way to draw muscly thighs isolated. Like, I don't think any of my OCs are ripped or shredded. They're kind of, um, you know that, like, skinny strong kind of, kind of kind of body type where like they're defined enough that it's kind of I'm like I'm gonna have to edit out so many long pauses trying to articulate this they're like strong enough that they have a little bit of definition in like the upper arms not much uh, but they're generally on the more skinny noodle side for, like, the chest region. And then I give them thighs. Um, horrible. <laughs> horrible person. Just always drawing the same body type for, for masculine bodies. I'll have to go out of my way to try and... I'm going to just have to draw some Genshin characters, right? I just have to draw some 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 uh, gotcha game pole uh honkai star rail uh azur lane doesn't have men in it does it no i don't think so i just have to draw some like honkai star rail and genshin genshin dudes and practice like muscly bodies because like most of them are muscly right right that's how that works right what else what else would draw people in aside from like mommies and buff people I, I literally play Genshin and I, I couldn't tell you. I I need to play Genshin again. Um, <laughs> I think my partner plays Honkai Star Rail. He might have quit. Mm, he probably quit. We can look at some Baldur's Gate bodies too. I really do want to get back into playing Baldur's Gate once we can get it downloaded. I could definitely just draw some, some fan art from Baldur's Gate and that would probably help as well. Right? Right, Iris? Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't draw as many masculine bodies as I probably should have. I probably will be going out of my way to practice that again, but through fan art, I've, I think I've broken down enough feminine bodies here that I've 
done the back to basics technique that I was needing to do to really feel like I was creating art correctly and I knew what I was doing, right? I think I did that good enough that I was able to, I can just go into fan art and drawing again without particularly worrying that I don't know what I'm doing. This was a very refreshing and kind of invigorating practice for me. Like this experience was very, very rewarding and I, I feel better. I know in my last video I was kind of going on about how I, I don't know what I'm doing and you guys are going to have to sit through some, some crises. This two weekish process has really helped and I am feeling a lot better about art and kind of my art style again. I will be going out of my way to go backwards in this sketchbook to finish the page about my fairy girl, but I forgot to film a part of this video and I wanted to talk about it. I forgot. Um, so I hit 600 subscribers. <laughs> like, thank you guys. I know I said I would talk about it later and I actually am committing to it this time. So I did a little doodle for 600 subscribers and it is of that OC that I like never ever ever commit to naming. Her name is Sani currently, S-A-N-I. I'm gonna change it. I don't like that name. So I mean if looking at her gives you any like ideas, go for it. It is a bit of a wonky sketch for sure. I do feel like I maybe shouldn't have done the like smirk headling kind of thing I was trying to do. It, I feel like it did kind of mess up the way her face splits down the middle and I didn't like draw enough lines to make that quirk of the lip quite feel right. But this has been added to the sketchbook. Um, I don't really know that I've actually like made note of this but every time I like hit what I consider a milestone or just like particularly an exciting number I do a little drawing of this character or myself. It depends on which and what I'm in the mood for. And I put it in my sketchbook to commemorate. So this is now taped in, uh, not glued. I have it over a different sketch that I really hate, but I do want to show it when this inevitably gets a sketchbook tour in like five months. I'm going to estimate this will take me about five months to finish this sketchbook with how I'm going. I think I'm 20 pages in, 20 front and back, not, not, um, 21 sided. I'm always front and back. I don't know why I felt the need to clarify that. I, you're watching me draw front and back on a page right now, but I just wanted to say like, thank you guys so much for, uh, getting me to 600 subscribers. Um, somebody was congratulating me, uh, in my community post about this. And I really do want to make it clear that um, this is a, like, us achievement. Like, we hit 600 subscribers, not me. We did it. Because I wouldn't be here without you guys. I wouldn't be able to, like, show you guys my art and, like, do this without you wanting to see my art. You know what I mean? Like, that's what this is for, is for sharing my art and talking about it. So... I just wanted to say thank you so much and I think it's right about now that we should probably start getting ready to move into the outro. Whoa, Rain filming an outro at her desk? What? <laughs> I feel like I haven't filmed at my desk in a minute with my mic plugged in. But yeah, I mean, outro time. So, I mean, so this was my last day of these practices, right? So not quite as many masculine bodies as I had hoped to do. Not quite as big as I had hoped to go, but I will be doing that soon. I want to find some better references. Uh, the woman I was referencing for this one, I, I'm so sorry. I don't know who she is, but I found her on Pinterest. She's really pretty. I want to look at more of her. Um, and then this page got a little bit more chaotic, a lot more things stuck to it. This page hasn't changed all that much since you last saw it. I think I might have darkened some lines 
and maybe overlapped a few more things maybe some more hearts not super sure and then I think I just darkened some stuff over here not a whole lot changed this page hasn't changed since I started the filming process and the recording process so I mean I feel very good about the the experience I'm going to fill this page for people who watched my last video with um, hairstyles and like more kind of coat attempts for her. So that will be probably something I post on a community tab or a short. I don't know if I need to make a full video out of it. You can let me know down below if you do want to see a full video, but I don't really know if it's necessary since I already recorded that entire process. So I mean, yeah, I mean, that's more so up to you guys, but ultimately I'm feeling a lot better. I'm very happy with this process. I do want to kind of do this a bit more in my own time, um, like this wasn't my own time, but I want to do this a bit more and I don't want this video to be just multiple hours of you guys having to watch me just pen sketch <laughs> bodies. So I think it's hit like a good point where I'm like, okay, this is all you guys probably are going to like want to fit through and then I'll like try and do an update or something or maybe I'll just like post it to a short just dumping all of my anatomy sketches so I guess that's it I mean thank you so much for sitting all the way through this video like truly I don't know that this was as interesting as a lot of my other content has been recently so I am really, really appreciative of everyone who sat all the way through this video. I do hope you got some insight on art block and kind of studying anatomy and how I kind of prefer to do it. And then this is not um, an anatomy study. I was trying to draw something and it didn't go good. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope that something good came out of this video for you guys and that I entertained or gave you insight that you guys enjoy. So thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, wherever you are. And um, nope, that's not my how my intro goes. I'm not editing it so you guys could see how confused I am. But um, like if you like, dislike, if you dislike, uh, comment any thoughts or opinions that you may have subscribe if you want to see more of my content and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day night wherever you are <laughs> thank you for sitting all the way through this video bye bye